Hi everybody, I'm Hector Garcia. If you're an accountant like me that uses QuickBooks Online, you're in for a treat. QuickBooks Online just released the new beta version of the new books review experience, which is pretty close to being a game changer. I explained in this little snippet, so I actually took um, a little cut of a webinar that I did earlier today where I can explain and walk you through that. And I think you won't be disappointed. So definitely check it out. And then after you watch it and after you try it yourself, Go in the comments and kind of tell me whether this thing is as much as a game changer as I think it's going to be. Let's get on it. In order to have the new books review experience, you have to first be in the new UI experience. And then secondly, you have to be in the new banking experience. So you have to be in the new UI and you have to be in the new banking. So you have to go into banking. I, I, I don't know where this is written. I don't know where these rules are set. I don't know like who figured this out through like really strange trial and error, but you have to first switch to the um, to the modern experience or whatever you want to call it, the new experience. You have to be on the new experience. So this is on the, these are, um, they're calling these anomaly detection. And if you're going to Intuit Connect, I'm going to make the assumption that they're going to go all in on this, like in, on the main space, on the main stage, all the Intuit employees, they're going to, they're going to speak as if this thing is the best thing since sliced bread. And it's, it's good and it can get there. Okay, they just, they just need a little bit more better guidance. So let me, let me start by kind of walking you through it. First thing is they expose everything that's in anomaly detection, which are all of these groupings of things. But you can click here where it says add, remove checks, and then you can pick which of these you want to include in this screen. So like for a lot of people, like they don't, they don't use all these Maybe they'll use just one thing on categorized transactions, click on save, and that's the only thing they want to see. And again, why would they even why would they even um, give you the ability to remove them? It's because it's a pain in the butt to click down here and click on waiting or down here and click on done. Now we technically solve that problem, right? Like if you want to select them all, again, why does Intuit not give me a select all button? There's something that's going to give me a freaking aneurysm, okay? Um, but, um, so like all here, I click on save. It's we kind of solve the tediousness of going through and clicking each of them done. It's by coming up here and clicking mark all done. So we have a little button there that when you click mark all done, we'll go in there and click done for you. Okay. And it's important to keep in mind that Intuit is after Keeper's business and they're after Zenit's business. So there's two apps that people know, Keeper and Zenit, that do these type of things, kind of Intuit doesn't want them to be controlling this piece. So Intuit wants the accountants to, to, to feel that their better accounting experience is inside QuickBooks and not inside a third-party app, okay? All right, so then I'm gonna show you how they work. So I'm gonna open up on categorized transactions. What you see on this screen is you see, and I have to explain this step-by-step step because it's, it's not super intuitive, but what you see here is our transactions that are using the uncategorized expense or, or uncategorized income account or uncategorized asset. I just vomited in my mouth. So uncategorized asset, uncategorized income and uncategorized expense, by default, it will show them here. However, and this is, the, this is kind of brilliant, when you click on edit inclusions, it shows you the accounts are automatically being chosen, but you can actually pick any of them. It's like you don't actually have to use their quote on categorize. You can say, hey, I want to look at transactions that are using the, I don't know, this um, equipment rental account. I click uh, save. I mean, I, I have to pick one that has transactions in it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and this particular but, file is crazy. Yeah. But that's kind of what it does. Now, one thing that drives me crazy is I don't have a button to like default back to the uncategorized, but I'm going to go back and type uncategorized um, expense and click on save and just kind of go back to this. And then in this screen, and this stuff is like amazing, okay? In this screen, I can actually select a bunch of transactions. Click on edit and watch this. This is, this blew my mind. And I think most people haven't even noticed that this is here. I can change the payee. <laughs> so this, I can change the expense account. I can change the class. I can change the location. And 
and, 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 and I can add the customer project all in one fell swoop. Essentially rendering right tools, a feature to change the payee or the account or the class allocation from the register, pretty much useless, okay? Well, partially useful. And I'll explain what I mean by that. Um, so this is amazing. It's incredible. This is like the batch editing tool of my dreams. You know, the, the, the stuff that I always wanted QuickBooks to do, the stuff that, to be honest, Mark and I spent a lot of time thinking about how we were going to build this. And now we don't need to build it anymore, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Okay. But a couple of things that are missing, and this is where I'm giving into it some free advice. It shouldn't, but. Um, the source account is, is being shown here. So I can see the source account. The problem is I can't filter by source account. So if I could filter by source account, that would be incredible. The other thing that is missing is <clears throat> I don't have a way of grouping them, grouping them by payee or by source account. That would be super useful. That's not available yet. Um, if you have a check or something, the check number doesn't show, not available yet. Um, whether the transaction is cleared, like reconciled or not, that's not being shown. Again, not available yet. There is a status here. And this is tricky. This has nothing to do with reconciled. If you check <laughs> this, if you check it, you remove them from the screen. And then you add wow. them in the marked resolved. So I think the terminology is all wrong here. But marked resolved are things that you no longer need to review. It doesn't mean you don't need to change them. It just means you don't need to review them. And if you uncheck them, it sends them back into to do. So not bad. Okay. Now, because this screen, this should be such a sacred tool. This, sh this shouldn't be like put in there with a bunch of stuff. I think this should be its own screen. I think I should be able to scroll up and the headers are fixed. I think I should be able to click on customize and have every single possible column being added, not just some columns. I want to be able to add custom fields because that's relevant. Like again, the, the way they do this stuff is just, okay, they have, they have line description, but they don't have transaction memo. Okay, they have the um, request as a blank box. So you have to guess that that blank box means request. So of course, like QuickBooks did something really, really good, but it's not complete. And they need someone, like they need to get feedback from us or someone like me into it. If you wanna send me a, a check with six figures, I'll sit down with you and we'll make this the best damn tool in the world. But they're not gonna do that, right? They're gonna rely on their engineers to kind of partially make this and then hopefully within a year or so, they'll, they'll make it better. But who knows? Prove me wrong into it. How about that? Prove me wrong. Okay. Um, then on the rows, I could pick whether I want, you know, 300 or 10 or 50 or whatever. And then you, you can do, you could change uh, the row height I like that. And you can choose whether or not you want the alternate row color. That's awesome. Uh, on the sorting, and this is the, a very mysterious thing. Okay. You can sort by everything, which I love. Okay, absolutely, like I, I have absolutely no quorums with that. You can sort, but they added a little teaser here, literally a teaser with a little box that says add sort, but it doesn't really work. Like you can't do anything, sort of implying that at some point you'll be able to do double layer sorting where I can maybe sort by mm -hmm. vendor and then by date or sort by class and then by, ven by vendor. Like that would be amazing that I could have that multiple layer sorting. Unfortunately, that's not available, but it's almost like they, they're building the groundwork for that. So I love that. Um, so I think, I mean, this thing is like on its way to be lightning in a bottle. That's, that's what I called it the first time I saw it. It's like lightning in a bottle. This thing is so freaking good. And again, it renders, it renders a project that Mark and I have been working on for many, many months, which is a batch editing tool. It pretty much like, I, I think- uh, We'll you know, see. Yeah, well, again, we'll see. But if, if they go in a good direction with this and they watch this video and they listen to us, we don't need to build it, okay? A lot of stuff missing, like custom fields would be great to have here, be able to batch edit um, the date, you know, like I put the wrong year or something like that. That would be awesome. Um, is shift click working here? Let me see. Shift -click. It sounds like it is. Oh, oh no, it's, yeah. it's working for me. Oh God, thank God it works because God, it, just a fun fact, shift click may be the most annoying thing for me to work on in any given page. Yeah, it, it seems like it's kind of working. Um, click, shift click. Yeah, well, that uh, is not so it's, it's classic into it, kind of working, almost working, sometimes working. 
Um, so yeah, that's pretty awesome. I mean, if they were to add batch delete from here or batch void, I mean, you could, I think with literally two weeks of three engineers, Intuit could literally build the most powerful tool for accountants ever made. Like they could actually make the claim that they're building stuff for accountants. Like, like, like finally, for the first time in like 12 years, Intuit can go out there and say, we build a very powerful tool for accountants for you advanced users. And it's working incredible and our users love it. But it's just missing a couple couple of things. But I'm telling you, I, I I can be more impressed. I am this is the most impressed I've ever been with something that Intuit has built. And that's on categorized. So there's a whole bunch of other things. There's you know things in on deposited funds, and then there's um unclear transactions, which by the way, really awesome. But generally with unclear transactions, we don't need to batch edit them. What we need to do is delete them, right? So like in here, what we really need is a deleting tool. But, you know, um, it's really weird the way they did it within 12 months. Um, you probably want to do it, you know, before a particular date or, um, you know, based on the reconciled date. I wish I could do it by bank account so I can do, you know, bank account A. Okay, clean those up. Bank account B, clean those up. That's missing. That's where right tool still still works pretty powerfully. So I'm, a, I'm asking you to, to go into the, the, that tool, into books review, turn on the new experience. And give it a shot. It's it's I mean, I'm truly, truly deeply amazed what it can do. I